And if that wasn't enough for the heartbreak, if that wasn't enough for the heartbreak, we've got even more sad and distressing news here that Michael K. Williams, um, legendary actor from The Wire, um, legendary actor from Bulldog Empire, legendary dancer, legendary all round great dude from the sounds of it and pe what people say about him pff, is dead, man. What a hot, this this one crossover just the timeline just you know a couple of hours ago and I just I can't I can't believe it man I really really can't believe it it says here the white actor um, Michael K Williams found dead in an NLC apartment the white actor Michael K Williams was found dead on a suspected heroin overdose in his Brooklyn's penthouse Monday afternoon law enforcement told the Post Williams 54 was discovered unconscious in the dining room of his luxury Williamsburg pad with what appeared to be heroin on the kitchen table and I don't know man like. <sighs> I think I was speaking to somebody about this the other day, maybe on Discord or something about how, you know, heroin has unfortunately taken the lives of some of the greatest artists that I've ever known of them over my life. Um, one of the notable ones being Dash Snow, um, seminal New York artist who died way, way too young. Um, obviously, he had these other problems that he was dealing with, but in general, you know, heroin took him. He couldn't take he put it, couldn't take it down after many many interventions and this was before ever fentanyl came around right i think he might have died in the late uh, early 2000s or something right it's a long long time ago but yeah man to see somebody like a michael k williams who was you know loved by all for the most part to die in such a way is just such a shame it really really is a shame especially at that age man it's no it's no it's no age to die for a, a successful black man like that living at the peak of his powers you know i mean with just he's so much more to give it's just oh god um, obviously a scenes of police and uh, you know medical services outside of his a penthouse apartment god damn it it says the acclaimed actor's nephew found him a little before 2pm and someone called cops up to the address at 44 Kent Avenue saying there was a man there who was unresponsive and feels cold Jesus Christ Williams was pronounced dead by authorities at 2.12 so just 10 minutes after basically he was already pronounced dead so he must have been dead for a while sources said that adding that he appeared on TV shows that, that TV star had fatally OD'd no foul play indicated a police officer said no full century the apartment was in order a man sat sobbing alone at the table outside Williams building talking to his cell phone monday afternoon all these families outside here just oh god almighty man the heartbreak of that um i found a body and he got saw one man said into his phone who's as well new York post man have some decorum too bro what are they doing eavesdropping on man talking to his family and stuff like grieving over the phone and they were like fuck them let's skip all that shit um yeah oh that's him obviously in Bordeaux Empire playing Chalky White. You got here obviously in Omar, the seminal role in The Wire. Oh, Spores Before Dying. <sighs> I don't know what to say, man. It's heartbroken to be fair. One of my favorite actors and just personalities all around, especially the fact that he came into the game being a backup dancer and then being a choreographer. And I think got his first movie role off the back of Tupac, liking the way he looked because of his scar, right? And I don't really know the history about the scar, but let's just imagine the scar didn't come from a good circumstance. And let's also imagine most likely than not when he was growing up, you know, he was bullied quite a lot for his scar. Um, and then to get to a point where one of the most important hip hop artists of your time is basically saying your car, your scar is the reason why I wanted to pick you for this role because I, I know you've probably lived the life that I've probably lived. We come from the same place and acknowledging the pain that you've suffered and using that as a way to kind of achieve your dream it must have been so gratifying. It must have been so oddly gratifying to have that moment. And the fact that he spoke directly to him was like, oh. And then, of course, the Janet Jackson, the backup dancing stuff, like, you know, all this amazing stuff and then becoming a legit actor later on in life. You know, the Omar role, in my opinion, I still think the chalky white role in Bulldog Empire was maybe his best in terms of displaying his range as an actor. The fact that he had to basically play this conflicted man who was trying to, you know, make money the legit quote unquote white way, but also trying to appease his community or his, you know, the people that he grew up with in the quote unquote hood. Um, the fact that he was that, you know, him trying to raise a young family daughters young kids um also with the wife that strain that you know living that kind of lifestyle puts on the relationship 
um, you know, the fact that, you know, dealing a life of crime, you're always due to get backstabbed and people trying to take over for me. I think remember there was a guy underneath him who thought he was going to take over his spot. Just so many different bits of Border Empire, um, him acting as Chalky Wayne Border Empire, that I thought really stood out that for me really represented his range. You could definitely tell this guy was an actor, actor in that respect. Um, because again, he had to play somebody a little bit more restrained, a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more layered than an Omar. Maybe Omar was layered, don't get me wrong, but it does a little bit more to him in terms of depth, in terms of things he had to explore. Um, was incredible, 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 incredible. And I think I've said it before on Twitter that I always thought that he'd be a great, you know, Frankie Knuckles in a biopic if it, that ever was to happen. Um, especially leading to some of the, you know, f some of the sadder parts of Frankie Knuckles' story towards the end, when he was struggling to, you know, make ends meet, and all of his deals were fucked up, and he couldn't get all the money that he basically rightfully earned over the years for some of the seminal tracks he made. I thought Michael K. Williams could definitely depict that maybe era of his life really well, or maybe sometimes some of the good parts. Regardless, there were so many avenues you could go down. Um, just the other week or just you know recently when DMX passed he was he played kind of one a, a starring role in some of the tributes that were led for him so just now to hear only a few months later he then and happened to have passing as well due to some foul play with drugs it's just oh it's heartbreaking man and like I mentioned before somebody it's just heartbreaking too knowing somebody as famous and as well loved and as well regarded as him eventually has to end up passing away alone like this in the home do you know what I mean like in that kind of circumstance it's just that's the only sad part that's one of the other sad parts about it I'd hope when he was around people let him know how special and how influential he was I hope that's the case I'm not really too sure if people did remind him and gave him his flowers while she was around but I hope they did um because yeah just dying alone like that yourself in your apartment it just crushes you man it's just when you think about stuff like that you think of somebody you know the art that they offer you all the good times all the memories all the boredoms that they help to eviscerate and then here they are dying alone with no one around them no friends no family just them alone with their thoughts with their feelings some people are suggesting the pandemic might have played a role in it i don't know i'm not here to hop off aside i'm just here to kind of you know remember a great guy man a great guy a great actor a great artist somebody who had a lot more to give 54 is no age to die um people should be able to take drugs and have fun and live their lives if they're not have a risk of dying especially not not especially not somebody with his level of experience of being in a game he shouldn't be in a position where he should be passing away from doing some drugs that shouldn't be the case but unfortunately drugs nowadays especially in the u.s are being laced with fentanyl even to the extent of like xanax and weed is so if you're out, out there just be careful man just be careful that's it really be careful i'm not here to tell you to stop and don't do this don't do that because people are going to do what they're going to do everyone's an adult um you're free to do what you want with your time and your money but just be careful in it just be careful because the last thing we want is people more people to be passing away off the back of this man but yeah r.i.p michael k williams um gone but never forgotten at least when you're an artist of his caliber you'd leave behind some seminal um timeless work that can be revisited again and again and again people on the timeline are heavily sharing clips of him talking in interviews clips of him playing different characters on tv and movies and stuff and it's just endless the amounts of content he's able to produce again elite level artist elite level person who's been able to create so many seminal moments that people have captured and recorded and saved in their memory banks and again his memory will live on forever in it that's one of the great things about being an artist you rarely if ever die at the moment that you passed away any moment your name is brought up again you're alive again Jeremy, you spring back to life again um you're kind of uh ever young in it but yeah r.i.p michael k williams man sucks in it that sucks real 